and welcome back to the Genesis Designs model bench um, with part four of the Tonka build or should I say the Tornado GR1 build so I know getting straight into it I said in the last video that I wasn't going to produce another video about um, fit and finish and filling however it's come to it and I've thought you know I put so much into it already with so much information about the foibles of this kit and there are still yet more so I would be remiss to not make some sort of effort to show some some of the final points of construction in this video so there will be some but we will get on to some more interesting things for the latter part of this video I hope anyway let's just have a quick re uh, look at where we're up to and a, and a few of the things I've done since we last uh, met as you can see the wings are on and the lid is on uh, this was not without its issues as we know um, so as you can remember hopefully I extended these wing roots and you can now very clearly see why if I place one of these in position you can see how much of that white is still showing and that would just be a gaping hole which would clearly be no good um, but there you go so the wings are fitted in this new forward position 24 and a half or 25 degrees roughly close enough certainly much closer than it was uh, and I have yet to do the modifications for the slats but if I just come closer hopefully if you can see this pencil line here that is where the uh, the fairing covers up to so that's the amount of modification that I'm going to have to do to get these slat apertures right but I'm quite happy with the way that has all worked out anyway so the wings got glued in I used liquid cement or extra thin in these joints but because both joints had fairly significant amounts of CA and tan talc filler or epoxy filler in there I knew that liquid cement on its own wouldn't be adequate so from the bottom these holes in the bottom I simply added some neat CA into there basic super glue and that has worked its way right through the joint you can see the gloss the glossiness of it here uh, so these are perfectly sturdy you know there's a tiny bit of flex there but that's fine they're certainly they're not very bendy at all okay uh, next point to note when I wanted to add this I thought I need to do some work on the wing seals uh, the kit supplies a pair of plastic ones with a bit of rudimentary detail on them they're nothing to write home about uh, and I wanted to do a bit of a better job so initially I looked at modifying the kit parts um, to give me some depth to work with but I gave up on it and what I've done here is I've made plastic card versions that put up to the wing and they're just fitted from the inside before the lid went on so I've got a nice deep recess there and I will use Tamiya epoxy putty again and I will make my own wing seals out of, out of epoxy putty here the fit of this upper part was pretty damn decent actually it went on without any real trouble you can see the joint at the top of the intake there no big issues with that either side and the same at the back uh, along here not really any trouble at all I then added this rearmost section of fuselage beyond this it's all an exhaust pipe and that's where I started to find some some fun now because in the kit's defense this isn't entirely down to the kit okay all the way through this I've started from the the, the base plate of this fuselage and I've built it all up part by part bit by bit each time prioritizing the fit where I needed to for ease and at no point have I been interested in test fitting the whole lot to make sure that everything fits so I fully expected to have some issues when I got to either this the air brakes or this back end the back end part in itself didn't fit together ever so well and again as with all the rest of it there was a lot of flash and nonsense as well but this is what I ended up with uh, and honestly this side is actually less bad than the other side was but uh, we have a 
significant gap and a significant step as well here uh, same at the top there's a step and another step and another step you know it's not great the taper doesn't follow on it just it basically just doesn't fit I uh, sanded the both mating faces to make the joint as good as I could and that as I say that's what, what I was left with this side was actually worse uh, but I have now remedied the situation with CA and talc filler which you can see you can see the white part where the pivot hole for the tailor on is and you can see how misaligned that was by the shape of that section of filler but there is also a fairly significant amount here blending in underneath that air break and this whole area of the back part is quite a significant amount of filler in and then again on the top here the air break itself fits pretty well actually along the top but there was quite a gap here and hopefully you can see the whiteness that is the talc powder filler along there there's a very decent gap there all in all fairing this half using talc powder and CA glue took a couple of hours I think and then I've rescribed the panel line detail back in paying attention to the detail on this side of the kit and using photographs to help so all that's left with that is to add the rivet detail back in but that's why I did it a half of it first and left this half completely didn't touch it it's so that I can still see the panel and rivet detail on this half to give me something to work to when I put it back in on this because I knew I was going to lose it all oh I sniffed I'm sorry uh, the front here uh, the intakes I fitted the oh dear I've dropped that now these movable plates here you see from the inside I fitted these into position and when I did that I noticed you can see the white piece in there that is this plastic card infill there was just a gap there and when you fit the top part of the fuselage on obviously you can't see right through it or anything but you could see a significant difference in the depth in the top there so I made some plastic card filler, filler pieces which butt up nicely to the end of the intake trunking that's already there and then come across the top of the movable intake um, flap things I don't know what they're called sorry uh, so that's sorted that out and it is now ready having got this on and been working on the back I can fit this when I'm ready now but this doesn't fit anymore fitted quite well for a while but it's too it needs trimming now to get in but I'm confident that there won't be too many issues with that and I'll come back to that later if I need to so yeah a lot of work here a lot of work didn't fit was horrible um, not entirely just the kit's fault I perhaps could have mitigated it at other stages but to be honest I feel justified that I didn't because the rest of it the filling and sanding and rectification has been really quite simple and not involved so to just have a bit of work to do just in this one area it, it's a not too high of a price to pay I don't think really just my opinion other people may may disagree uh, at the front here I had to do a little bit of work around the cockpit area just sorting things out and I made, there we go, this is the Airs Resin combing piece uh, but I made some modifications to the canopy it's not going to be very easy to see I don't think but I've added internal framing using plastic card and I've then masked the inside of the windscreen area and sprayed that from the inside in black uh, you can see the, oh maybe there we go the canopy seal arrangement there that was added and also this hollowed out area here was all carved out drilled and carved out it's quite tricky work but it does look a lot nicer for it that sits in there 
uh, quite nicely and it does improve the look and it makes the, the canopy uh, frames look deep and chunky like they really are it's a nice def definitely worthwhile doing I think especially considering that the main canopy will be open when we're done I've also been working on the undercarriage legs those of you that have uh, checked out the Facebook page I apologize for this repetition uh, I started to make the undercarriage legs and you might think why why am I doing that so soon it's very simple really I'm starting to get to the point with this main assembly where quite soon I'm going to be wanting to start putting paint on it and things and I'm going to want the radome in place so I need to be absolutely sure that the nose weight is sufficient and the undisputed absolute best way of doing that is to use the undercarriage and make sure it actually physically balances so I started to look at the parts and as with the rest of this model the sink marks, the flash the horrible mould seams, everything is present in spades on these undercarriage legs and on top of that they're moulded in two pieces now Mr Matt Whiting who is the lead kit designer at Airfix commented on my Facebook post that the reason the legs are in two halves is because the sensible maximum mould thickness they can use is about three millimetres without getting lots of sink marks um, so that's why they're in two halves and obviously there's some quite complicated detail on these things as well but suffice to say they got sink marks anyway and the detail isn't the best either so what I did was I glued them together and then I've drilled up through the middle and I added a 1.5 millimeter brass tube that goes all the way up this leg to about here and, and there it is in the bottom and then I added over that a 1.8 millimeter piece of 1.8 millimeter brass tube here for the actual oleo the part you can see that was slipped over the top of the 1.5 and then everything added back in this one isn't quite done yet I've got to finish um, cleaning and tidying around where the torque link fits and all the rest of it and then there will be some additional details added to that and the nose leg followed a similar path this is also a two piece part focus, thank you and again it was hollowed out, it was cut up, hollowed out drilled out I should say brass tube stuck in the middle there and again it goes all the way up the leg for strength and because it's a proper circular cross section for that oleo which the kit parts just would never have been um, as well as that this plastic is relatively soft so the undercarriage legs just aren't very strong anyway so that took a little bit of time and then on the weapons front I have now I have now got the boz pod completed added the base plates for the little fins added these aerofoils around the back there are four of those please focus camera I've done the rescribing and then added that raised detail around the back inside the back I've added this webbing or web around the end open end drilled all the holes out inside and then added those two tubes that you see in the center so that now represents a boz pod really quite nicely the sky shadow pod is not quite finished yet but I relocated this intake that was sawn off that was in the center originally that was sawn off glued back on offset and it was a short shot at the front and not hollow so it was hollowed out and reshaped all using CA and talc and here there's a some kind of exhaust vent or duct so there's a piece of tubing in there with a Tamiya epoxy putty fairing which I just need to carve to shape likewise on the top the epoxy putty fairing and then a plastic card end, end plate and this side is yet to be carved down to shape much much thinner wings right, then, in with and the, the this fixing plates were last update before I start painting this cut thing. to shape uh, so following and on again we've just seen quite a nice looking sky shadow pod now 
by the Without any need for paying to the advertise beforehand. advertise beforehand. So, there we go. That's it for now. It's just I'll mixed up. back. Two separate uh, when parts I've mixed together. Done some more work and got this made. And pushed into the gap that I made completed. with the plastic card. The, the little um, the pits, if you like, and then shaped with a cocktail stick. Um, and any other shaping tools. And I have to admit, I find these uh, Tamiya paint stirring sticks quite handy for that kind of thing at times. Uh, it's useful to keep the cocktail sticks and the, the um, any tools that you use for manipulating these kinds of putties. It is useful to keep them damp in some way. Uh, it helps to stop the putty from sticking to them. Uh, moving forwards then, the, the wing fairings are on. Not forgetting to make sure that they are not flush here. They're not supposed to be. And uh, These did need quite a lot of finagling to get them nice. Obviously I've moved the wings forward quite substantially from where the kit had them so you know they didn't fit perfectly they were never going to but I did get them somewhere near. Uh, a lot of super glue and talc filler in the leading edges on both of them where the Kruger flaps are obviously not used on the RAF aircraft anymore but that area there was all quite substantially reshaped, filled, sanded etc and then the slat aperture, easy for you to say, was extended out to suit using super glue and talc. All of this is super glue and talc and then it's chiselled and filed to get that shelf back in just at the edge of the wing join there. I'll just grab a slat out of my box of parts. In theory I should have to shorten the slat, however in the down position it does still fit somehow even though the aperture is now about uh, one and a half mil shorter than it was it, it still sits there quite nicely so I, I haven't had to shorten it except for a very tiny amount so that's all good. So that's the slats. The top part I uh, shaved the aft edge of it down and indeed the forward edge a little and I kept shaving it down tiny bit by tiny bit until it's sat into position nicely and then the intakes once they were glued didn't need too much work and again super glue and talc in these areas just to sharpen those corners up and the leading edges no dramas really and from underneath underneath was a bit more difficult to be honest because I had to get this area here smooth but it's all there now okay and then at the back the thrust reverser buckets and the sort of exhaust area now this as you saw before the fit of these areas wasn't great and what I've done is I've let in this is some two millimeter aluminium tube and that's been let in at the pivot points both sides uh, for the tail planes and then all of this was filled and sanded as necessary and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm there, I'm there. I've got all the construction done. Yes, woohoo! <laughs> Off we go. But no, the thrust reverser buckets themselves still had to be fitted. And I'm sure you won't be, be surprised when I say they didn't. Uh, and a lot more messing around was required to get those in. They're in now. Uh, it's not, to be honest, for me, particularly underneath, isn't as neat as I'd like it to be but you know you, you get to a point where you're just banging your head against it for the sake of it after some time and there we are I'm going to when the ex when I fit the exhaust nozzles finally I will I can kind of just lift up the bucket slightly slip these in underneath and then there you go that's the back end sorted so the last part of the main construction then, two parts, the radome and the fin. So the radome is the 3D printed one that I got from Tim Perry. Uh, it's worth noting that the Revel kit has the split in the wrong place here. The radome actually pivots all the way back here. Uh, and then there's another panel line in front of that. The kit has you fit the radome even further forward, so beware of that. That is not a panel line there. Um, but unfortunately what you do end up with and what I have ended up with and I think it's going to be very very hard to see it in the in, in video it's quite hard to see it in 
with your eyes to be honest but there's a change in contour sort of where this radome joins that, that shouldn't be there I, I really can't get that to show up I don't think but you're gonna have to trust me on this uh, there's a slight change in contour at that point where the radome is fitted to the fuselage parts it needs to actually be effectively straight all the way back to the actual join so I'm going to have to address this a little bit uh, it's too much of a thing for me to leave it and I'm going to use just use Tammy putty and try and straighten that out a bit there before we before we get into paint and then the fin well obviously I already did a, a whole heap of mods on this finally got it all done went to fit it and you can quite clearly see with your eyes that there's a fair old gap underneath it um, it's less easy to see and I can't get there's not enough oh yes there is here we go so I've got it square it's straight but there's a bit of a twist in the fin itself when you look at it from some angles it looks like it's not on straight because of that not a lot I can do about that really but I just had to hold it upright and use uh, super glue and just tack it into position and that is, that is how it is now I have to address these gaps and just vary it at the front there once that's done pretty much at the point then where I'm going to start being able to add primer and what have you I won't be priming it in the conventional manner i.e. I'm not going to put a thick coat of say Tamiya primer over the whole thing and sand it back I'm not going to do that I will I'll only end up having to reinstate, reinstate a whole load of surface detail if I go about it that way but I will be using light coats of paint to act as a kind of a, a guide coat for further work the tail planes I modified them the kit would have has these sort of flat tabs that, that interlock and fit in there I glued those in into place then cut off the protrusions smooth and I've drilled it out and I've added 1.5 mil tube which just slips into that 2 mil tube that I've got in there these I will tack glue in place when I'm ready but for the mo for now they just slip on and off as necessary and then I just wanted to show you a quick top tip section down here underneath I removed with a saw and a scalpel blade some vents one here and one here and here's the piece that I removed off, carefully kept to help me to form a replacement when it came to it and it has come to it and here is what I've done to make a replacement I've not yet attached it but that sits under there like that and then the other one sits just here in this area anyway and what I've done is I've formed this out of metal sheet and I'm just going to quickly show you how I went about doing that it is quite a useful trick if you want to hollow out small vents on cowlings you know 48 scale spitfires and things like that those little small intakes that should be hollow and are not they're very very difficult to get hollow but it's quite easy actually to replicate them uh, and completely replace them and I'm just going to quickly show you how to go about doing that alrighty then so what can you use to do this with I've got here this is my little baggie of lead wire and lead foil and whatnot. Uh, lead foil is really good for this kind of thing because it's very very easy to form very easy indeed here we go cut to not fumbling so here's some different sorts of sheet then uh, this is lead foil this is Valinda lead foil you can see it's really really easy to form it's um good for things like tarps and whatnot if you're an armour modeller but it's useful for all kinds of little details honestly this is aluminium this is a like a coffee can lid I know it's dimply but you can get rid of that and again this is very easy to form things that are slightly more difficult litho plate this is used in printing or used to be historically it's very very thin about five thou maybe a bit more maybe ten um, aluminium sheet and you can absolutely can form scoops with this you'll need to anneal it first but you can do it and then brass shim shim stock got this off amazon a few quid all different thicknesses and again there's right down to pretty much foil but you could form scoops out of all of these things what i'm going to use on this occasion is a little piece of pewter foil that i've got 
The reason I've chosen this uh, is a little bit thicker, so it is a bit more difficult to work. But the bigger the scoop, the thicker you want to use the material, really, otherwise you're just going to damage it. And with these being on the underneath of the aircraft, they're likely to get knocked a little bit as I'm handling it going forward. So I wanted them to be a little bit more sturdy than just pure lead foil. And now another bonus with doing this is these kind of scoops, intakes, vents, are usually made from quite thin material on, on real aircraft. So they do tend to get dented and bashed around. And when you remake them out of metal, it's very easy to replicate that as well. So anyway, let's get on with it, shall we? So I've just got, this is just a random piece of acrylic that we're kicking about. Just to, to stick it onto this to... You want a nice hard surface. And then what I did was I used a cotton bud. I've got um, environmentally friendly wooden handled cotton buds. And I uh, carved this one into the shape that I wanted. Now I should note that the kit part was somewhat undersized so this is a bit bigger than the kit part so stick that underneath the, your piece of sheet start the bending off and then I'm going to just pull that tape down again because this is quite thick and hard to, to uh, form I, I put that in there to stop it from moving around too much and, and losing my print if you like normally but with lead foil and the thinner aluminium foil, a cocktail stick should suffice to do the forming and you would literally just hold everything in place and just gently work your way around the part, forming it and using the cocktail stick to push those edges down to make the part. As I say, this is a bit thicker so I'm actually going to use that Tamiya paint stirrer again and just work my way around a bit at a time. Don't panic if you get dents and folds and creases up to a point we can get rid of those afterwards. I'm just forming it. So that's sitting around the stick quite nicely now. I'm going to use a straight edge, literally, to straighten the edge up. I say for your first few goes you might want to use normal lead foil or, um, or that thick sort of baby milk and coffee can foil. A bit easier to work with. And when you're happy that you've got a suitable shape, which I am, you can, the former can be removed and there you have a fully formed intake scoop from metal just like that this is then removed from the sheet by your preferred method now again with smaller, smaller scoops and lead foil I will just use a scalpel blade and cut around it gently gently you have to be gentle or else you'll just squash it gently gently all the way around and just keep cutting lightly until it's free this is a much heavier piece of sheet and although it will cut with a scalpel it's it it takes a bit of effort so i'm actually just going to use scissors that side. take your scissors and just cut around the part so and there we have a vent and from there it's just a simple case and again it's not that simple because you do have to be so very gentle this is relatively sturdy compared to lead foil but you do need to be very very gentle but using skinny sticks and sponges just smooth and sand the part get rid of that sort of slight flange that's been left on it and in, my, in this case I've actually reduced the depth of it quite substantially 
excuse me, um, by sanding the bottom. I'll have that form, I suppose. And there you have it. How to reproduce scoops using metal foil. It's a very, very quick and easy process. And it, as I say, things like the the, the small intakes on Spitfire and 109 cows uh, using the the dark grey thin lead foil. It's it's a matter of moments work. Place it over the kit part. Uh, form it in with your cocktail stick. Cut it out with your scalpel. Then just sand off the kit part and stick your lead foil replacement on uh, and it does look a lot better so there you go that's essentially it for the build phase of the tornado yes there are still lots of parts not fitted and of course I, I still have work to do in other areas pylons undercarriage parts you name it but the main bulk of the building the actual airframe is now complete and I will in the next video we're starting to prepare it prime it sand it out all the rest of that good stuff so look forward to that in part five i never th I, I never thought this would go to five episodes i reckon it's probably going to end up at uh, seven or eight but um hopefully it's all still useful information for you um so yeah until next time look after yourselves look after each other and genesis out